There are many reasons why I love Legends of Runeterra, and one reason is that every unit is unique. From the one drops that start off every match, to the late game beast that finish the game, and to the cards that never see play, each and every unit has so much personality and story to them. Because when you expand your card art, it's always a full illustration with a story to tell. Good morning everyone, my name is Kryn, welcome to my Canadian apartment and let's talk about some of these stories, specifically the top 5 saddest stories in Legends of Runeterra. And as always, if you enjoyed this level lore content, like and comment for the YouTube algorithm. Anyways, let's get started. In the number 5 spot, we have the hapless aristocrat, also known as Lord Emmett in the story, courting disaster, but I'll call him the hopeless simp. And the reason why I wanted to count this unit is because his death is far more gruesome than any other unit I've researched. Imagine yourself as a high Noxus lord. You're going through your daily life until you're charmed by this pale, beautiful woman. Her beauty stuns you so much that you even worship the very ground she steps on. You're starved for her attention. You go to her castle every day, knocking at her front door. After countless attempts, she does notice you and lets you in. Jackpot, right? No, this is a landmine. This pale woman is Elise. Her dark ties to the Shadow Isles grants her unnatural youth and beauty in exchange for a few unwitting souls offered for sacrifice. You have walked right into her trap. She paralyzes you before you're sent deeper down to a ritualistic table. A giant arachnid stares you down before wrapping you up as you helplessly watch, unable to do anything. Spiders in all shapes and sizes begin to feast on you, slowly with small bites at a time. You can't scream, and all you can do is watch. Personally, I'm not great with spiders, I hate them, and they give me the creeps. Imagine giving everything to a person you're attracted to before finding out that you've been tricked all along, and now you're facing thousands of spiders. Lord Emmett offered Elise riches and his loyalty, and all he got in return is a painful death. But that's why Hapless Aristocrat is my number 5. In 4th place we have the story of Bloodcursed Harpy. Imagine yourself slowly turning mad every second. You're aware that something's wrong, but the itch won't go away. That's what happened to Mona before transforming into the Bloodcursed Harpy. In a crumpled letter found in a torn up satchel, it reads, Kian, if you're reading this, I'm hopefully dead. I can't control what's happening to me. The blood under my nails won't wash off. I'm so itchy. I scratch and scratch, but nothing helps. It hurts. I just want it to stop. If I'm still alive somehow, promise me you'll stop trying to find me. I would ask for forgiveness, but I don't deserve it. Be good to mother, okay? This letter was written by Mona, before the curse fully transformed her. At that time, she couldn't control her actions. Presumably, the blood under her nails was the blood of the widowed Huntress's wife, Loreen, which explains the Huntress's unbridled motivation to kill the cursed harpy. While we don't know if any sign of humanity is left behind a beast, we know that it's not just a monster, it was a regular person like you and me. And that's why it's my number 4. There's always a champion to save the day, but what if there wasn't? In number 3 we have Belvethian Elder and Priestess of Desert Light. Shirima is close to the void and the region gets constantly attacked by these abominations and horrors and all you can do is pray that someone will save you. The city of Belvev was overtaken by the Void and no one was powerful enough to defend it. The real horror can be read from the Belvevian's elders card splash text. Chilite reeled at the horror before her. Dare lay for a, the kind butcher's daughter, crushed to death. Beside her was Gorub, the fisherman's son, still reaching towards his love with lifeless hands. So many memories gone, so many lives lost. With Grimace, Chilite turned to the evil ready to give her life to save the rest of her people. But even if you bear arms, how can you stop these eldritch horrors that tower over your homes? How can they stop this never-ending invasion of voidlings coming from an infant source? Priestess of the Desert Light, on the other hand, was somewhere else fighting her own battle. Surrounded by certain doom, she used the last of her light to call someone or something to help the remaining citizens, but she wasn't able to survive. Living in Shrima is certainly a challenge, but that's why these two cards are my number three. And in number 2 we have Jun, the skilled Roy. I mean, the prodigy. My apologies. Jun was Master Yi's greatest student. He taught Jun everything he knew and gave her a home. With her development, Master Yi knew that the Wuju style was in good hands. But his mind drifted to the darkened weapons he was protecting. Ever since its discovery, he'd been troubled with a terrible sense of foreboding. Nothing good would come from it. But even sealed away, the darkened aura could be heard across Runeterra. And this caused some unwelcome detention. Kane sensed the darkened aura and went to claim it for himself. There, Jun and the temple's guards attempted to stop him, but none of them were a match to the shadow assassin. Badly wounded, Jun felt that she failed her friends, 
her master, and all of Wuju. On the brink of death, the darkened weapon whispered to her, You will never die, because I will never let you. Having no other choice, Jun accepted the voice as she gave the weapon control. She took hold of the weapons. Her humanity fled, and in its place a hateful essence filled the emptying vessel that was once Jun. It washed through her, over her, around her. Jun was fully gone, and Zolani was reborn. This is not just a death to Jun, but to Wuju, and that's why it's sad to me. Jun takes my number 2 spot. And finally, in the number 1 spot we have the stagehand. The stagehand is a young priestess from Ionia who had a grim fate in the hands of Jin. Intentionally or not, the priestess caused the death of her own people by betraying them to the invading Noxian army. With blood in her hands and ridden with guilt, she felt hopeless. Looking for answers, she found Jin. Easily swayed, in order to repent for her sins, Jin convinced her to sacrifice her own life. When the time came, the priestess carried a Trojan horse bomb in her hands as she went into the middle of the Noxian camp. Setting it down, Jin's piece of art was done. You can even see the explosion in Jin's level 2 art, but that's the end of the story. What's painfully sad is that Jin in his voice lines is continuously encouraging the young girl, and mechanically, the car tells her whole story without mentioning it. This is certainly one of Riot's deepest stories in Legends of Runeterra. But that's that. These were my top 5 saddest units in Legends of Runeterra. If you enjoyed this type of bite-sized lore content, subscribe and see you again in 2 weeks. Anyways, I'm Kryn, don't do illegal, don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, alright, peace.